an overview lesson. Are you ready for this? Uh, on Proverbs. <laughs> so I, some of this, of course, was covered, but not much, not much. What is a proverb? Is it a command? Can it be a command? Is it always true? Is it always positive or is it always negative? How wise was Solomon? I have trouble remembering one proverb. I mean, I'll even repeat it, right? I, mean, I admit my weakness here. And the next day, I have an opportunity to use it and it's gone. What's the matter with me? I, I don't want to, actually, maybe I do want to list if it can help. <laughs> if it's my lack, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll keep working on it. How is it that Solomon could remember 3,000 and a thousand plus songs? <clears throat> wow. I think it's a, an understatement when it says that he was the wisest. Obviously, that accepts Jesus. Jesus hadn't been born yet. Uh, 3,000. <coughs> so, a proverb is from the Latin proverbium, or an adage. It's a simple traditional saying that expresses a perceived truth based on common sense or experience. Proverbs are often metaphorical. Some near synonyms, simile, metaphor, adage, parable. In Solomon's case, can we call them truisms? Do they require understanding, logic, reasoning? Are they sometimes difficult? Are they often specific to a situation? An example from the world's point of view is he who hesitates is lost. The other side of that is look before you leap. Two different things. And they're totally opposite. So what's the deal? Well, if the boat is leaving, you better run and jump. If you hesitate, you aren't going to make it. The guy that ran and jumped, he made it. But maybe he should have hesitated and checked to make sure it was the right boat. I don't know. <laughs> so um, let's read a verse from Isaiah 118. I've loved this verse since I found it. Isaiah 118 <clears throat> says, Come now, let us reason together, saith Jehovah. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let us reason together, Jehovah says. How can we reason with him? <coughs> well, obviously, our mentality, our IQ, doesn't really allow us to debate with him, to argue with him. But reason. He gave us the ability to reason, to figure things out, to work out looking down the path, right? And he says, let us reason together. We're expected to think. God expects us to think and figure things out. So Proverbs may be difficult, but they're not too difficult. We need to figure it out. So instead of a worldly example, let's look at a uh, Solomon example, Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. This is one we've all read and uh, had some, been entertained by it in various ways. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like him. And then it turns around and says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Now Solomon said this, and remember Jehovah said, let us reason together. So if a politician 
said this, can you imagine the backlash that he would get? He'd be laughed at and scorned as though he were stupid. And unfortunately, many would agree. Rather than stopping and thinking about what the situation is, right? We understand there's a time for both. You don't cast your pearls before swine. Sometimes there's no point. If you cannot help, there's no point in answering the fool. But there might be a time when a fool might be looking for an answer. And so, and so you, you help him if you can. But people have gotten to where they don't want to think, especially in our political world. But we have to think, we have to use our brains. So off the topic here, I know why there aren't any zombies today. Nobody has any brains left for them to eat. <laughs> Sorry, I was just testing to see if you were listening. It's, it's so sad that people don't want to think and don't want to give anybody else a little bit of credit for a proverb or a parable. Um, so it's, it's interesting. Proverbs seems to deal a lot with the inevitability of God's justice. There's a lot in Proverbs about the fool and the wise man. And it will end up, end up being just, won't it? Solomon's Proverbs maintain that wicked deeds will, be, will lead to divine retribution and punishment. And the wise man's payment will be the opposite of that, won't it? <clears throat> Some themes in the in Proverbs. The fear of Jehovah. Find that so many times. And accepting correction. Now that goes for adults and children, doesn't it? Absolutely. Accepting correction. Why do you fear God? Because he has the most wisdom, sovereignty. I mean, it, it's, just, it's just unfathomable how he created life, the minute detail, and they keep getting smaller and smaller with better telescopes and microscopes, etc. And they keep thinking they're going to answer a question, and they keep finding out it just exposes another whole layer of creation. Super microscopic, and they haven't got a clue how to deal with that. Now, I think they're starting to realize that if they get one more layer, they're going to find another layer. I think that's true. I mean, that's what's been happening so far, and, and they're realizing now that they've got these little things called quarks and other stuff that are that are another whole multitude. I, I can't even think of the word. Another level of smallness that the level that they can't even see yet is made up of. Okay, really, really difficult. So God's sovereignty, his wisdom is just incredible. So another thing Proverbs are about, it, it teaches us to live in a way that honors God and others. So let's start not in Proverbs, but in 1 Kings 4, verse 29. 1 Kings 4, 29. I've referred to this, but I want to read it. 1 Kings 4, 29 says, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart. And I, you know, we've all read this before, right? What's largeness of heart? He gave him wisdom and understanding. We've read that. We understand that. Solomon was able to figure things out, period, at extremely wise levels, you know, beyond what we would figure out. But he also had largeness of heart, compassion, empathy. Not only did he have the brains to figure things out, but he had the love to want to do it the right way. even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom 
excelled all the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. They were famous for that, weren't they? And all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. Wow. Now that's a long time ago, so we have lost some of that to be sure. But you know, people like Einstein and Isaac Newton and others were just famous around the world, right? I'm just gonna say Solomon was even more famous than that, more famous than the wise men of the East. And he spake 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts and of fowl and of creeping things and of fishes. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth, which had heard of his wisdom. So he understood things that I'll bet we haven't even heard of. I suspicion that this was a gift from God, as it says at the beginning there. Pretty crazy stuff. Okay, Proverbs 1, starting at the very first verse. Uh, we've read about him. Let's read what he says. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Okay, think. Perceive is thinking, right? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. We talked about that this morning, didn't we? A wise man will listen and he will attain wise counsel. He'll figure it out. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark, dark sayings. So proverbs may need interpretation. Interpretation. To understand a proverb and interpretation. So we need to think about this stuff. Verse 7, the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. You know, a lot of people don't like that concept, but the word fear here is much more than fear. It does include fear, but it's reverence, it's honor, it's glory, it's love. It's recognizing Jehovah for who he is, the creating power that he has, the absolute necessity with the undeniableness of his existence. What's the last half of that? But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, we, you, your brain automatically goes, ah, come on, I'm pretty smart. That's, to us, that's just silly. But yet, we all have moments like that. Yeah, but the fool lives that way, never steps out of that. The fool says there is no God. Verse 8, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. So we've got wisdom, but we're going to have another source of um, Instruction, another source of information. Sinners, if they entice thee, consent thou not. So there's two sources. There's God and there's Satan. So do we see the choice there? It's one or the other, and yet people want to draw a third category. But there isn't a third category. 
There is not a third category. So young people, you, can you see that? There's only two categories. Remember, your parents were young once. And if they haven't forgotten, their advice is experience talking. I remember, I, 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 I'll confess, I can remember when I was a late teenager, it never occurred to me that the 30 and 40 year olds that I was kind of uh, rebelling against thought I was just a smart ass. It never occurred to me, and I don't know why not. This is a, <laughs> a big slam on me. That they had been my age once. They had gone through this. And I believe completely now that I've had, got a few years under my belt that every generation does this. Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Wow, Satan got you. I'm sorry, I'll just say it plain and simple. Satan got you. You're not thinking very clearly. On the other hand, I've seen parents who think their little Johnny is perfect. I think they forgot. Like I said, parents who don't forget is good advice, but I'm afraid some of us forget. <clears throat> to forget the temptations that the next generation is going through. So, as young people, you can choose to love your parents, or according to verse 7 here, you can be a fool. It's true, your parents aren't perfect. If you're a teenager, you already know that. Sorry, parents. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they don't want the best for you. It's a rare parent that doesn't want the best for their kids. So how many Proverbs can we find that tell us how to raise children? Oh, I don't know, about 20. Probably we won't have time to go through those this morning. But that's interesting. Let's turn to Isaiah 33, read verse 6. Isaiah 33, 6. <laughs> which says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Jehovah is his treasure. And we're breaking into the middle of a thought here and having something to do with Hezekiah. And some people in this, this last part here think the fear of the Lord was Hezekiah's treasure. And there's certainly some truth to that. But I'm going to say here that the fear of the Lord is Jehovah's treasure. If you fear him in the way of respect, honor, glory, and love, that's what he wants from us. To choose him against the odds. And that's his treasure. I mean, it's, it's kind of difficult for me to think of myself as valuable to God. Right? But he created us. We are valuable to him. He wants us. He wants a family that loves him. Don't we all want that? I mean, we do. That is huge. I, I'm sorry, you can have your billion dollars if it means I don't get my family that loves me. That choice is simple to me. When I was younger, that might not have been an easy choice. <clears throat> uh, Deuteronomy 28, 37. We're going to talk about Proverbs here in Deuteronomy 28, 37. <clears throat> and it says here, And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Do we remember Deuteronomy 28? It's 13 verses of blessings if they obey and love God. Great blessings, wonderful blessings. They'll be the head nation of all the nations and not the tail. There'll be blessings in the city, blessings in the field, blessings of the fruit of your loins, blessings for the sheep and the cattle, uh, and, the, and all of their substance, etc. Other nations will fear thee and flee from thee in battle. 
blessings of rain and season. Everything they touch or do will be blessed. You shall lend to other nations, and they shall be servant to you. Blessings are huge. Wow. Total security, total peace, total comfort of living. <laughs> what could be better than that? However, if you don't obey, there's 55 verses of cursings if you reject God. <clears throat> I tend to have the suspicious mindset, maybe some people even say negative. I prefer to call it realistic, but whatever. <laughs> um, 55 curses that just ends up in their destruction and them being kicked out of the land as slaves. By the way, what happened? That's what happened, isn't it? That's what happened. But this ver verse here talks about a proverb like a byword. A lot of proverbs are negative, aren't they? Certainly some positive ones, but there'll be a proverb and a byword among all nations. <clears throat> Turn to Habakkuk, second chapter, Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2, verse 6. Which says, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with sick clay. So a proverb, <clears throat> the reason I came here, can be a parable. It was one of my comparison words, synonyms for proverb. Not a perfect synonym, just a near synonym. Proverb terrible adage, byword. A lot of lot of things about Proverbs, aren't they? Okay, back back to Proverbs, the third chapter. Quite a bit to read in chapter three. <clears throat> Starting at verse five. Proverbs three, five. Some good Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And yet, in the modern world, what do we lean on? I, I say we, I mean the world, hopefully we aren't leaning on our own understanding. Hopefully we are trusting in Jehovah. But a big part of the world is rejecting that there is even a God. Or that there are multiples in some cases. <clears throat> Verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He's gonna help you. I like that. If you acknowledge him. Acknowledging Jehovah is the first step to understanding. Verse seven. Be not wise in thine own eyes for the fear of Jehovah. Excuse me, start over here. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear Jehovah and depart from evil. Referring to all three of those verses now, thinking you are smart, leaning on your own understanding, <clears throat> is the first step to misunderstanding. But fearing, respecting, honoring, loving Jehovah is the first step to understanding. Thinking you're smart, wise in your own eyes, is the first step to misunderstanding. Yeah, you, you went down the other road, not the godly door, but the satanic one. <clears throat> verse 9. Skip a verse there. Verse 9. Honor Jehovah with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. A promise. So some proverbs are a promise. You honor Jehovah, you get a promise. You're going to do well. Verse 11, my son despised not the chastening of the Lord. Did we read this one? Somebody brought it up this morning. We read something like it, didn't we? Neither be weary of his correction. Why? Because he wants us to be his children. Absolutely. Verse 12, for whom Jehovah loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. 
Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Ultimately, if you get like Solomon, not that we can get to that level, but if you gain, what does that do for your mindset? Hey, I understand that. I get that. It's a positive thing. Happiness is the result. <clears throat> Verse 27, skip down to verse 27. Verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. It's not always in our hand to help somebody, is it? But it is sometimes. Don't hold back. To do good. Especially if you owe it. No, it's me. <clears throat> Verse 28. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give, when thou hast it by thee. Playing games, right? You can do good, and you're saying, Yeah, no, we'll, we'll do this later. Verse 29. Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Make sure you treat people with what, what do we call it? square balances, you know, just balances. Yeah. Well, what is it the New Testament says? Uh, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Absolutely. Skip a chapter. Go to Proverbs 4 and then verse 5. Proverbs 4, 5. And again, talking about good things here. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. I've done that. Have you ever read something and <clears throat> particularly biblical and say, wow, I've never read that before. Then you look over and you see notes where you read it and made notes from it before. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her, wisdom, right? And she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Yeah. There's nothing left out there as far as science, acknowledging God, wisdom, knowledge. <clears throat> Verse 8, exalt her, exalt wisdom, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Yeah. yeah. People do acknowledge, like somebody brought up this morning in Ecclesiastes, there was a poor man who was able to save a city. They didn't give him any credit before or after, but they knew he was the wise man. I guess I would choose that over being a good man. At least I hope I would. <laughs> Skip to chapter 6, Proverbs 6, first verse. We're, we're, remember, we're looking at Proverbs here, so we're going to appear to be jumping and hopping around. Truisms, Solomon's Truisms, Proverbs 6, 1. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Yeah, I've got personal stories there, but I'm not going to relate them. Be careful. Be careful. The fastest way to lose a friend is to be surety for them. <clears throat> this is a proverb, not a commandment. But it's a warning of a proverb, isn't it? Skip down to verse 16. Proverb 6, 16. Got to read this one. Got to read it. I memorized this one, and I don't have it memorized now. What's the matter with me? Proverbs 6, 16, these six, thing, these six things 
doth Jehovah hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. You know, those, those, those three things, a proud look is on the same level as hands that shed innocent blood? To me, that's kind of crazy. But wow, okay then, now I know what God thinks. I think that's important to know what God thinks about the proud look. Look at me. <clears throat> yeah. Verse 18, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. <sighs> okay. There's a difference between gossip and helping, isn't there? One is sowing discord, and the other is helping. Two different things. These six things that Jehovah hate, yea, seven are an abomination. <clears throat> Skip to chapter 9. Proverbs 9. Oh, that we could read them all. And you know, we did that. I don't know if I know some of the people my age and older. I'll keep on sorry. You know, we did Proverbs with Jim on Wednesday night studies, and it took a long time. I don't remember how long. It was maybe a year, but it was a good study. <clears throat> Proverbs 9, verse 6, which says, Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. I thought we were supposed to rebuke. Hmm. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. There is a time when you don't, isn't there? It's not a commandment, but it's a it's a proverb. Be careful. Verse 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Okay, I like that. <clears throat> Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. You ever get love for correcting somebody? Do you ever give love when somebody corrects you? You know, sometimes, down the road, oh man, you were right. <laughs> Seldom is it right away, right? <laughs> But down the road, we get a little bit wiser sometimes. Verse 9, give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. That's who I want to be like. Verse 10, the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge, fear and knowledge, of the holy is understanding. <clears throat> okay, there's a couple in Proverbs 16 I want to call out. Verse 3, Proverbs 16, 3. I've always loved this verse. I learned it early on when I decided I wasn't going to be a hypocrite. I was only going to do what I wanted to do. And uh, I got corrected on that. So we'll read this. Commit thy works. Thy works. Whatever you do unto Jehovah. And thy thoughts shall be established. Whoa, that's backwards. I want to do only what I want to do. That way I'm not a hypocrite. But let me back up and think about it. How do you learn to do anything? Practice. And this word thoughts here can be interpreted as plans, purpose, imagination. It's, it's in, in the Old Testament, this particular word, 50 sometimes, I don't exact. But 32 of those times, it's interpreted thoughts. It is also interpreted plans, purpose, imaginations. But they all kind of carry the same thought, don't they? Your brain, your direction, your plans, your thoughts will be established if you do what's right. The fact that you don't want to do what's right doesn't make you a hypocrite. It doesn't. It means you are a wise person who decided to do what's right anyway. 
And that will establish your brain in the direction it's going. Skip down to verse 32. <clears throat> 16, 32. So here's another pattern of things in Proverbs that has applied to myself. He that is slow to anger. I, I actually have friends who are proud of their short fuse and their short fuse. Ah. And I have the same problem, but I, I, can, I can confess, I believe, that I've got it mostly in control, but only with a lot of effort, a lot of work. But I'm not proud of the fact that I don't control it even better. <clears throat> he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Now, poor wise man in Ecclesiastes was better than all the rich people who couldn't save their city. He was in control. Backwards, Proverbs 4, 23. One for, one for our thoughts here. Proverbs 4, 23. Keep thy heart. I think about this one for a while. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So control your emotions and your thoughts. Yeah, you can control your works, and they will end up in you thinking, right? And this here is just more along the same line, but it's got some good thought going on here. Proverbs 19, verse 11. 1911. 1911. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger. Puts it off. Psychologists back in my day were advising that if you get angry, you know, punch a pillow, go out and scream, you know, punch something, you know, a tree that won't hurt your fist too hard, you know, but let it out, vent it, and then it'll be done. Well, psychologists later on realized that was bad advice. That was bad advice. What that does is that encourages you, that justifies you, that settles it in your mind, yeah, Man, I was right. You no. Know, the right advice is here. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger. And now even psychologists acknowledge that, you know, control it, put it back. That is the way that you ultimately defeat it. You get rid of it. You'll never get over it or defeat it if you feed it. If you let it run your life, yeah, you won't ever win. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. You know, sometimes you just let something go. You can fight over everything, right? But maybe sometimes you just let it go. And that's a good thing. <clears throat> Verse 19, skipping down a few verses. A man of great wrath, soon to be angry, yeah shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Oh, man. Have you ever had to help somebody who was in, a, who was in trouble because of their own lack of self-control? <coughs> this is a sad one to me. Yet thou must do it again. Are you able to help that person? Maybe. But the real help would be to teach him how to control that anger, wouldn't it? Because if he doesn't control it, you're going to have to help him again. But, help is real, help can happen. And we just read the verses help you to figure that out. Last one on this subject, Proverbs 25, 28. 25, 28. <clears throat> same thing. He that hath no rule over his own spirit, your own emotions, your own mindset, control over 
Yeah. Rule over is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Yeah. People that are not in control. There you go. Okay. So many of these pick on me, and I, I'm not trying to be a person that dwells in my problems. <laughs> wow, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Proverbs 13.10. Proverbs 13.10. <clears throat> Which says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not there yet. Proverbs 13.10. Only by pride cometh contention. Now, I didn't want to agree with this verse when it was first shown to me. I didn't want to. Only by pride come the contention. Why didn't I want to agree? Well, because it's always the other guy's fault. It's not my pride. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about that. Now, I've had a few contentions in my time, so I had an opportunity to look at this verse. So if I've had contentions in my time, do I have pride? Well, either that or I deny the verse, right? I had to face this problem. And I had a thought. I don't remember if I originated or somebody helped me. Probably somebody helped me. I've had to face this problem, and I figured that if two truly humble people, actually humble, loving, humble, good Christian spirit, if they have a disagreement, does it get contentious? I think we all know the answer to that right away. No. Because they're two truly humble people. They might disagree, but it never gets contentious. They will work it out as long as it takes in a peaceful, loving style. So if I'm in a discussion with somebody and it gets contentious, wait, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> okay, so those two humble people... <clears throat> And one of them gets upset. Does it become contentious then? You know what? Not so much if the other person stays humble. So if you just have one really humble person, it won't be super contentious. Right? Absolutely. <clears throat> So anytime a disagreement gets contentious, I'm sorry, it takes two. Because just one totally humble, it wouldn't be much contentious. It would only be one sided at the worst. Yeah. All right. We are past time. I'm about half done, but that's a great verse to end on. I got I gotta end on another verse. I'm sorry. <laughs> Acts 3, 19 through 21. It is more than excellent, right? This is a great, upbeat verse. It's the gospel of love. What's going to happen here? Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins, wrong page, may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of the restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This has been God's plan all along. He wants to establish the kingdom on this earth. We didn't get a chance to read Proverbs 10, 30, and 11, 31. The kingdom is going to be here on this earth. It's in Proverbs 2 as well. There's just a whole lot of good stuff in Proverbs. But we look forward to the day when he shall send Jesus. Sin. That means it's not God coming. It's Jesus coming who is sent from the presence of Jehovah. Thank you. Let's have a song. Number 291, give up your best to the master, number 291.
Father in heaven, our loving God, we thank you, Lord, for having given us this life and given your son, who by his death will give us forgiveness and give us a chance to be in your son's soon glorious kingdom. Lord, forgive us when we fall short and do not appreciate the love that you have given and shown. Lord, be with those wherever they are that are searching for your truth and that need strength. We do pray for all these things in the blessed name of your Son. Amen. 